some time ago, an episode appeared on the channel about what caused such a great negative metamorphosis of Johnny Klebitz in GTA 5 against GTA The Lost and Damned. Unfortunately, you won't find that video on the channel since it was taken down for a two second scene with Trevor Phillips, which was censored for all of that. It's a bit sad because the episode was pretty good to watch, but from all this, a certain plus was found as well. This situation gave me a chance to create the same video, but with a few important things that were unfortunately omitted in the previous version. So getting to the heart of what happened, Johnny went from being a tough man of flesh and blood to someone who could be so easily pushed around. In connection with Johnny, there's also the question of what happened to the lost MC, so it ended up being reborn. As we remember, the end of the lost and damned expansion clearly indicated that the gang would cease to exist, and each of the remaining members would go their own way. So going straight to the point, we'll first talk about what the fate of the Lost Biker Gang could look like after the end of the GTA The Lost and Damned storyline. To do this and smoothly move on to the answer to this question, we first need to go back a bit to the events that, of course, took place in the game itself. The very beginning of the motorcycle add-on to GTA 4 is quite intense, when Billy Gray, the leader of the Lost MC, returns to the throne after serving time in prison, the gang breaks off its alliance with another group operating in the city, namely the Angels of Death. The long-held peace by Johnny Klebitz, who took control of the Lost MC while Billy was in prison, is de facto shattered in an instant. Since the man was in rehab, he was most likely released on parole for good behavior, which may be somewhat similar to the situation with Tommy Rossetti from GTA Vice City, who was also released on parole. With Billy at the top, the Lost MC, in addition to engaging in skirmishes with the Angels of Death, is involved in some extremely valuable deals. They're trying to sell heroin stolen from the Angels of Death, or even get a solid cut from the Pegorino family for selling diamonds. In both cases, however, fortune does not favor the Lost MC, and problems multiply like mushrooms after rain. What's more, it turns out that Billy Gray wanted to leave Johnny and Jim Fitzgerald at the mercy of the enraged Triad, who did not intend to make any deals, but only to recover the goods and kill the thieves. Billy Gray gets punished for the betrayal of his friends very quickly because karma reaches him de facto immediately. This is due to the successful operation of the local police, which eventually arrests the man. As for the rivalry between the Lost MC and the Angels of Death, it remains in suspension. In turn, after a few weeks, the most devoted members of the Lost MC decide to deal with the past once and for all. The group decides to invade the prison and carry out an assassination attempt on Billy Gray, which ultimately succeeds. After the whole incident, the gang goes through a very difficult time. Johnny Klebitz and the other members order the burning down of the Lost's hideout to finally clear the air and put this chapter far behind them. After Johnny's last call to Angus, it can be clearly said that the Lost MC is unlikely to be heard from again. Angus, man. Chapter president? I'm president of a burnout house and some broken ass brothers. It's dead, man. It's over. What are you gonna do? I don't know. I'll probably keep sending money to Jim's old lady and her kid. I owe him that. We all do. Beyond that, I'll probably try to cut my ties. What about Ashley? Ashley? The ice got her good. I finally cut her loose in my head, man. I don't know what's left for her other than that need to fuck up everything around her. You've been a good friend, Angus. You're a good man, Johnny. Things should have worked out better for you. Well, things should be better for a whole heap of people. It don't work out that way, do it. Adios, amigo. And yet, after five years, we find out that the Lost MC is doing quite well. The gang moves to San Andreas to start a firearms and methamphetamine business. This is where players began to puzzle over how the gang was revived and why it then moved to Blaine County. The first reason that could come to someone's mind was losing a war with another gang in the city, which simply drove the Lost MC out of Alderney City and effectively prevented the rebuilding of this gang. In other words, after the breakup of the Lost MC, the members became convinced that they couldn't live a normal life, so they decided to reactivate the group. Unfortunately, the men did not see a chance for themselves in Liberty City and Alderney City due to the rival biker gang and the difficulties in raising funds and influence to allow for a full revival. Therefore, a decision was made to change the location and look for a place for yourself in another part of the country. The choice fell on Blaine County, where the methamphetamine market was booming. And that brings us to what we believe 
is the true version of events. Pay attention to the fact that at the end of the game's storyline, the bikers lose everything. In the beginning, the boss of the lost MC, Billy, without a moment's hesitation, set up his gang. This situation causes gang members to lose morale and begin to doubt their beliefs. While the concept of betrayal isn't completely foreign to criminal organizations when it's committed by the boss himself, the members of such a gang can feel as if they're living in one big lie. What's the point of trying to help the gang and call yourself brothers if even the gang boss himself, that's the most important person, turns out to be two-faced and willing to sell everything in the name of money? From that moment, the actions of the Lost MC are heading toward the end of the entire gang. However, it doesn't turn out to be so simple because we're dealing here with the recidivist syndrome. In short, a person who, for example, spent 15 years in prison and has learned to live there and cope after being released cannot find himself in that freedom, which often causes him to think that it would be nice to go back behind prison bars. It was the same with the lost MC, who totally could not find themselves in life as, let's call it, normal people. It quickly turned out that they missed gang affiliation in criminal life. Not only that, it's important to remember that other motorcycle gangs, like the Lost MC, have many sets scattered throughout the United States, in the real world. Due to the fact that the Lost MC ceased to exist in Liberty City and Alderney City, people who wanted to continue their criminal path were de facto forced to go to other parts of America. The men decided to meet and reactivate the gang, which, however, turned out to be difficult due to the very unfavorable conditions on the streets of Alderney City and Liberty City. The decision was then made to leave this region of the US and move to Blaine County, which was a much better place to start and which could be compared to Vice City in the 1980s, where, as Sonny Forelli said, everyone could get their slice of money cake. And finally, it's also worth mentioning that the Lost MC had a serious fight with law enforcement after the last mission in GTA The Lost and Damned. The armed attack on the high security prison in Alderney City was a total overkill. Even Thomas Stubbs himself, despite his many political connections, would not be able to cover for Johnny Clevitz, whom he valued for helping with his dirty tricks. It can therefore be said that leaving Liberty City in order to keep the gang running was an absolute necessity. In the meantime, let's move on to the second part of the episode dedicated to Johnny Clevitz. Overall, the man during the events of GTA The Lost and Damned was a really tough guy. Johnny was also an opponent of drug use, among others because of his love, Ashley, who was going down more and more every day because of drugs. Hey, sweetheart. Hey. My God, you look like shit. What's wrong? Nothing. I haven't been to bed yet. I've been smoking crystal. You've been what? <coughs> what are you, a fucking idiot? White dress motherfucker, what is wrong with you? Give me a break, okay? I feel like death. Hey. Hey, hey! What? It's because I care. You know that. Yeah, I know that. And now, with this picture in the back of our minds, we move to GTA 5, where after five years, Klebitz becomes a drug addict. Many players feel that Rockstar North has been a bit sloppy with the idea of such a big change in Johnny Klebitz's personality. While Johnny was involved in drug dealings in GTA The Lost and Damned, he never took them himself. For some reason, this changed in GTA 5, where Johnny was also involved in the drug business, by the way, being a client of his own too. The answer to the question of what caused such a big change in Johnny's personality is very simple. Ashley. Although at the end of the GTA The Lost and Damned storyline, Johnny supposedly ended his relationship with Ashley, as we find out later in GTA 5, the relationship survived. Johnny certainly tried to fight his beloved's addiction, but eventually gave up. Moreover, there's a high probability that not only was Johnny unable to help Ashley, but also Ashley got him into the addiction. From the player's perspective, the sad thing is that nothing is known about what happened, that Johnny finally decided to meet Ashley and what the woman told him that she managed to convince him, and what's more, why Johnny gave her a second chance in the relationship. The only thing we know about this is that after the ending of the Lost and Damned expansion, Ashley contacted Johnny asking him for money but Johnny was determined to break off contact with her. Didn't think I'd hear from you again. I didn't think I'd call you. You hear about Billy? Yeah, I heard. Look, Johnny, look, have you got any money? I need 40 bucks. I need it real bad, baby. Not this time. You can kill yourself on your own. Goodbye, Ash. As if that wasn't enough, Johnny received an email from Ashley in the following days, where the woman wrote that she was attending rehab, and then after a week, 
she was kicked out of it because, you won't guess, she was still taking drugs. There, regardless of the player's choice, Johnny will write an email that will make it clear to Ashley that the man does not want to see her again. So as you can see, it would seem that Johnny's relationship with Ashley came to an end, but somewhere between the events of The Lost and Damned and GTA 5, the fates of these characters crossed again. By the way, it is worth mentioning here, the relationship between Tommy Versetti and Ken Rosenberg, which is a great analogy to the situation. The difference, however, is that Tommy Versetti decided to break off contact with Rosenberg as soon as possible, who at some point ceased to be of any use to the Versetti gang. Since Ken was still high on cocaine, Versetti had no use for him, so he had to decide to break off contact with Ken, who eventually, as we know from the introduction, ended up in rehab. By the way, we recommend you watch this episode because we discuss there the whole thread about what happened to the relationship of both men after the end of GTA Vice City. Coming back to the point, the worst thing about all this is that in GTA The Lost and Damned, there are clear examples of Ashley Butler acting the same as in GTA 5 with Trevor. For instance, in the Roman Holiday Mission, we learn that Ashley got into debt with the Russian Mafia by borrowing money for more portions of drugs. Immediately in this quest, as players, we can see that the woman wanted to get money at all costs to satisfy her drug hunger. In turn, the second situation is Ashley Butler's relationship with Ray Bocino, who also gave her money for more drugs. Interestingly, Ray Bocino did not do it for nothing, because the man was probably also sexually abusing Ashley, and the woman may have been his informant about how things are going on in the Lost MC. You're gonna have to cut that shit out, Ray. It's not fucking cool. I fucked Ashley, my friend, and now I'm gonna fuck you. Anyway, Ashley cheated on Johnny long before the story of GTA 5. However, in the Mr. Phillips mission, the developers showed it more bluntly. Who knows, maybe Johnny was cutting Ashley off drugs, or maybe the man just missed them sometimes. And considering Ashley knew about Trevor's drug use, she decided to have sex with him in exchange for another slice. Anyway, we suspect that not only with him. Going further, it's impossible not to mention a certain issue that was completely omitted in the previous episode about Johnny. Namely, the user, Johan Batkron 1206 drew attention to an extremely important detail that can be found on Johnny Klevitz's jacket in GTA 5. As it turns out, Johnny has the rank of Vice President on his jacket, although after GTA The Lost and Damned, he was in the position of President. At first, we thought it might have been a simple developer oversight. But Johan's further explanation convinced us that this change made a lot of sense. Given that Johnny Klevitz became a drug addict, it's not surprising that his position in the gang was severely affected. So it's only natural that the Lost MC decided to kick Johnny off the ladder for the sake of the group, as he was becoming more and more of a junkie. As a result, he became less and less useful, moreover, setting a bad example to the other members of the gang. To sum up this part, the answer to the question of why Johnny became a buster in GTA 5 is rather simple. In short, the drugs caused total havoc in his mind. Johnny became weak physically, but mostly mentally. The decision not to throw Ashley out of his life eventually led him to the very bottom and finally to his death. Rockstar North, on the other hand, once again made us realize that drugs can be fun in the beginning, but in the end, they can ruin your life. Meanwhile, that would be all. If you like this episode, we recommend you watch two videos now visible on your screen. Thanks for watching. Bye.